Um, we talked uh, about how suffering has brought us to this path mostly. Um, and then I was I was thinking, you know, when when we when we sit and do the inquiry and and when there is that sense of presence, um, I'm I don't know, but I've been feeling that you know we, we people talk about it being like bliss bliss, mm. but I don't I, I I have been feeling that that space is both full of pain as well as joy. Mm. It is not away from suffering. Mm. It is somehow like um, you meet it there. It's mm. not that it can be something that you run away from. Mm. But yet, um, yeah, I just wanted to share this. Yeah. So, when we come to this being, it itself is independent of all feelings which can be labeled, isn't it? Although everything seems to arise from there. But you're right, the, the space of being in which this space is born, that contains everything. So, although it is true that many report in the natural byproduct of seemingly coming in contact with this being, seems to have these byproducts of bliss, love, peace, but that is not a requirement. It can be very sober as well. Maybe you meet the interplay of the opposites in the human condition, but one thing is for certain that as you come to this being, that which is most auspicious for you or most important for you will get revealed. You see? So we must not pre-decide and say this, is, this has to come or this doesn't have to come. Mm -hmm. and those are just uh, signboards in some sense at best. But we must come to God's presence. And in God's presence what has to appear will appear. And we can't actually ever say this is the reason why something comes or doesn't come. Mm -hmm. But if you were to still make an attempt, you would say that maybe there were things which were not being met. Maybe there were things that were just festering somewhere. So it's good for them to find their release. Mm -hmm. But it's important for us to keep our eyes on God. Keep your eyes on God's presence and don't worry so much about the byproducts and what is appearing. Because the mind will use that as a doubt and say, no, no, there must be something wrong in your case. Because everybody else is saying bliss and peace and love and joy. Here, you may not feel that. That's fine. Because you cannot meet your being wrong. If you're meeting your being, there are no two beings in there. <laughs> so you will meet the right one. And in your heart, when you, you know. In your heart, you know if you're meeting your being or not. If you're meeting his presence or not. So let's stretch my metaphor a little bit today. And if I was to tell you that you, all of you had to construct, I'm not doing this, okay? So I'm just telling you um, as a metaphor that all of you had to construct for yourself a temple in which actually God will come and reside. 
So, what will what all will you put inside the temple? What will you keep? What will you offer? What but what what pleases him? <laughs> Firstly, provide some space. Okay, very good. That's a very good start. Uh, make some space. That's very important point. How many pictures of yourself will you put? <laughs> no picture. Small one. No. <laughs> uh, how many things which are seemingly about God but actually about you? So in the photo, there's God in the backdrop somewhere, but the portrait is of you actually. <laughs> yeah. 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 You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. Okay. So the seeker is that one who still wants to be in the foreground, but pretends to make it all about God. You see, it's mostly about me, me, me. But I am not, I am not, or I am... This is me, this is me. You see? So, the reality is not very far from this metaphor, this picture that I have painted for you. you see? So, if our life is going to become a temple of God, then we have to make the space. We have to be empty for God to be present, to live in that space. And we must not fill it up with egoic things. You see? And things are either egoic or godly. You see? So if you don't fill it up with ego, then you're creating space for God. You see? But the trouble is the is the seeming wanting the relationship or the intermingling between the me and God. God for me. God for my benefit. Instead of me for God. So although I painted a metaphor, the point is to take this very literally. As much time as you will waste on me, that much time God will seem distant from you. Is it? But the point is not to be disheartened and say, but that seems too difficult. Yeah. Because nobody can succeed at this 100%. People will smuggle in some passport size photos of ourselves <laughs> into the temple from time to time. You see, it will happen. And the point is not to beat yourself up by increasing that more and more. With the terrible me and the unworthy me. Don't make the... <laughs> <laughs> at least one joke landed on this. <laughs> so many times we do that in the sense we want to carry the me, the monkey on our back through the gates of nirvana, through the gates of moksha, which is not possible. And the problem is that in the hypnosis, under the hypnosis of the spiritual ego, we don't even recognize that something is wrong. We feel like this is the way. I am coming to the truth. I am coming to awareness. I can be empty. I can be with God. But this I has not left.
So really the question is who lives in your heart temple? What is our life about? Or who is our life about? And we must go beyond understanding. It must become literal. You see, because you're not creating a library in that temple of Vedanta or spiritual concepts of understanding. The library can come last. It's, it's very, very difficult your challenge, Father. Like, first of all, you started with you are building a temple. Right? <laughs> so there is you already there. And then you are not even allowing a passport size photo. <laughs> and of course, like this is the this is the okay. You want credits for building the temple? <laughs> no, <laughs> and built by nobody. <laughs> One, oh, father. Then, oh, I'm my father is not coming here. I am coming here. So, who is struggling here so much, father? And you are on top of that. You are saying nothing of you. How? Where? What? Can't understand. It's beyond. So Today's tantrum is a bit playful, I think. Yeah. <laughs> the other day was more serious. <laughs> so one more there. question, Father. Like, oh, so okay, that's answered. <laughs> <laughs> that you will not answer, answer, I know. He knows father, that. Not answer that one. <laughs> so, what is my place in this temple, Father? It's we went to Rishikesh. Rishikesh, uh, I had a room in a small, tiny like ashram and in that uh, I lie down on the bed to sleep at night and on the fan it was written gifted by. <laughs> 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 gifted by so and so for the fan. Eh? <laughs> so at least that much credit we should get. Eh? Some of you saw that, no? you came to my room, some of you. <laughs> there have been whole satsang she's done that. She starts off very seriously with all Kundalini, all that. But if one joke hits, and she's gone for two hours. She's gone. <laughs> He's trying to be serious. So, so, Father, not the credit part or not the posting, but while the temple has been built. There is you, right? Or even if that, without that you is without that no. I. What is the core there? ingredient for the temple to be built? No. Can the me really build it, or is it the absence of me that is the temple? Mm. Huh? So you have to do your absence. <laughs> How will you do that? <laughs> In your absence, that is the space, no? that is the emptiness. Because if it's full of me, then there is no place for God. And take it literally, because here your Advaita mind will come and say, but everything, even me, is made up of God, and all this fancy spiritual knowledge will come, but it will take you away from the true recognition of the one within. Nobody's ever reported 
that we, they were just self obsessed me 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 all the time and their god was is anyone said like that ha yeah. so this you must build by removing yourself So your being frees itself from the false identity. Who will do it? You. You are that. The false identity is what you take yourself to be. That one cannot build this temple. That one needs to be plucked out. When that is plucked out, then we can say you built the temple. Consciousness built a temple for itself. who has not tasted the absence of identity for at least a moment anyone we have many in the world even if you don't go to satsang you go to some tourist places hill stations lakes to get that moment of not being burdened by the me i need a break they say but they need a break from themselves so in your absence presence can be met in india also most temples they don't let you in <laughs> they keep you there and there is a separate compartment for god but that is only where the priest can go and do the puja <laughs> my part said to me he'll meet me in the park but he wasn't there so i met him in his absence <laughs> correct ha huh? you here only when he get in bed ha my friend yes oh you okay <laughs> <Look. laughs> any other difficulty now that i completely resolved that one <laughs> that is a it's a perennial one it's a perennial one where even if for the moment we are empty of that it will keep re- resurfacing is keep coming back but what about me what what about me what is the rest of your life that you want
now all the options are laid out in front of you isn't it earlier before we coming to satsang maybe we didn't realize the two main alternatives but now hopefully they are apparent so what is it that you want the life free of me hundred percent in God balance balance yes no balance for the first anybody here for the first time will get scared <laughs> Why is that expression? Give the mic. We can have that conversation outwardly. Huh? No. <laughs> if we commit hundred percent then our life may become 50% because Maya is still very compelling. It will pull us in from time to time. So if you commit to keeping the temple empty of you, then sometimes you will still enter and that will be fine. But if you decide to do 50-50, then no God is going to happen. You'll be straddled, straddled under the burden of the me all the time. Who's really scared of this? A life which will be lived in God's presence, but scare, the scary aspect may be a life fully lived in his will, not living on my terms. So that which we are afraid to lose if we were to live in his will, that those are called uh, attachments. So now, you can relate to spirituality not just in the sense of okay you must be free from this you must not do this you must not do that but you can actually see how it affects you see affects your life moment to moment you see so what happens when we are deeply attached to something in the world when the mind offers us a proposition about that that seems compelling isn't it we're not able to leave it because we have given space in the temple for that attachment. Father, when I'm praying, you know, sometimes I've noticed that... Um, For the room also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like earlier when I'd go to temples, you know, um, I'll not feel, I would ne never feel the need to ask for something because it felt like, you know, uh, didn't feel like, you know, it's any, you know, that I want to ask for something. But now, you know, when it's as if like I know that God hears and gra like almost like, makes it happen you know when you really pray for something you know, I feel like God is you know listening then there's that tendency sometimes to just ask for something like in life you know just like can you look at that you know so and I've and I've seen this you know and it just uh, very good very good so 
you know what happens is that uh, children you know, when they're really small then they say papa buy me this buy me this cricket bat get me this thing you know so please come then uh, but after a point they come to a particular age and i'm waiting for that time with my kids but after <laughs> a particular time you come to a certain age where the kids are saying no 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 don't worry i'll manage see no no i'll manage i'll manage so sometimes we have to see whether are not asking for something you see is a sign of that pride that i don't want to bow down to god and if i bow down then i'm going to not ask for something or is it truly that we are empty and what is the test of that like there are many who decide not to pray for something but they will spend hours worrying about it is it so they basically they've taken the burden on to themselves and they're looking for ways to resolve it by themselves on their own terms you see rather than pray about it so i feel like that's a good good way to check if we find ourselves in worry better convert that time of worry into a time of prayer even if it is about something specific is it because then we retain our child like innocence in some sense otherwise many times it's our pride itself which we don't realize like many say i don't ask god for anything i have said that probably a lot i don't ask god for anything is it but then are you spending your life empty of anxiety and worry but we must ask with the full faith that he knows best whether it is to be given or not whether it happens or not then it is no longer our business no longer for us to judge so we must refrain from as much as possible from any shows of tantrums or anger with god sometimes it's okay little childishness comes sometimes in us so it's sweet that way but we must not make a habit out of it oh i prayed for this you didn't make it happen everything when we pray is his mercy his grace it's not an entitlement that beggar servant prayer uh, why why do you um, it's more of an attempt of the lowering of the me than a removal of the me and that i'm trying to relate to what you're saying now yes. because it's for the me who remains after the removal that better be kept low <laughs> before the removal then all the inquiry all the chanting all the devotion everything is uh, to become empty of this me that is what we pray for more than anything else you know we say bless my heart with the light of spirit it is only possible when we are empty of ourselves so all that is for that but the bigger servant uh, prayer is to keep that ego in check and not reinvent itself into some spiritual superstar should i do it or not <laughs> ah, yes <laughs> why you say it is it only after the removal then hmm? it's for this one that is resisting this one that is resisting it that's who it is for who is that one who is that one
That wants to understand what is for removal and what is for keeping it humble. Who is that one? Huh? <laughs> what a rhetorical question. <laughs> so confusing, I don't know which of how many eyes. Confusing, are. okay. So anytime you're in confusion, it's very good. You see? Because you must recognize where the confusion is and run from there. <laughs> <laughs> that means that you're in the wrong place. And over there, nothing I say really will work. Yeah. It's good, no? You notice that you're confused? Run. Huh? Not from satsang, from that place. <laughs> because the mind tells you to run from satsang, it's too confusing. <laughs> my absence is my presence. Uh, the who remains after I am not is the beggar servant. <laughs> too confusing. Where? Is, even this idea is it that... confusing in your nose? <laughs> Where is it confusing? In your entire being, it is confusing? It's not even confusing now. It's, yeah. uh, then what is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Where don't you know? Anywhere. <laughs> your fingers, nose. You don't know? Where don't you know? <coughs> Where are you looking for the answer? <laughs> but where are you looking? Are you able to identify? Like these aspects of our being we must be able to look at now. No? At least we must be able to say, okay, now here the energy system of thoughts seems to come and go. Here there is the energy of emotions being felt. These are traditionally called the koshas. Of it's human existence. Really like a place, like an inner shelf that you open. It's yeah. The top drawer, lower drawer. Yeah. It's not under that, no? Because... Where, where is this? Which this drawer is this? I can't say upper drawer. I didn't... <laughs> where, where I is... can't play. <coughs> In your whole being it's happening? No. Then where? There. That. Just with patience, just look at that. It's so obviously it's not literal. <coughs> Like higher and lower and things, but you will be able to recognize the various aspects of your being. You see, this body is not the entirety of your being; it's just a shelf, like to use your term. There are various shelves: the shelves of the shelf of thought, the shelf of emotions, the shelf of imagination, memory. Like shelf, now right? thought came, I don't know which shelf it is. Okay. That so, shelf where thought came is mine. But it <laughs> comes so where? many places. Where? I, I sometimes think it's the heart. Okay, now I'll wait for a thought to come from your heart. Huh? Don't, you can't plant it there no matter how. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting to come by itself. <laughs> The point is not to visualize. I hope you're not visualizing or imagining. You just have to notice. These are the natural mechanics of the human condition. See, the mind operates a certain way. You're all able to identify. Just look at your next thought that comes. You see? One thing that I think is coming from the heart. It could be unlisted. So, uh, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> that term. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> okay. Huh, what was that? If I keep myself humble, if I keep doing the, like whatever in the beggar servant prayer, then God will take away the ego. It's not something that I can. So it's it's a prayer to get rid of something that I can't get rid of. And this I don't know where. 
See, we have to notice these seemingly subtle things, but they'll become obvious after some time. Because if we can't identify mind, we can't identify emotional sphere, we can't identify the um, feelings, the imagination, memory, where all these things are functioning, see, we must be able to see that. Literally that which is perceiving all of this, this is accessing various aspects of itself. Your body sensations are the same aspect as your um, imagination, as your memory. Body sensations? Mm, no. You can notice them, no? Is it? So pain, hunger, yes, stuff like that. Exactly. It's, it's in one specific. Now imagine place. a tree, or remember a beautiful time you had. Uh -huh. you, see, you can notice the different aspects of your being, isn't it? It's all one being, of course, but in the play, in the human condition, it has all these various layers. So the layer at which we experience these thoughts. That is the mind. We can say, we can make, like, there's no actual thing like the mind. So, based on our definition, we can say this is what I'm calling the But mind. I see what you're saying, yes. because you can, you can clearly it. make that distinction. Yes. Yes. Subtly, we can see that. Like, you can tell the difference between emotional pain and physical pain. So there's this inner and outer only, I think, even that only I'm not, like the way you talk of it and yeah. the way I see it is, uh, the space is like common, but the inside thing is, uh, what is that? It's something that I have access to because I'm inside the body or I'm the body. So, okay, we had this conversation, but... If the body is like the glass, then what can we put inside that glass? Can we put something which is like what you're calling the inside, inside this? Like even a thought, no, like you say that no, nobody has done a surgery to find anything like all these feelings. Even a thought, when we say we have a thought, no surgeon has been able to find a thought. Physically it's not there, but as a body, I can the inner <laughs> something that I can't show empirically. What's happening is that if you mix experience and intellect, uh -huh. you see, then you you get stuck in the halfway points. Okay? Just don't be scared to leave your intellect, to leave your mind. Yeah? Where you can meet. What is being said? <laughs> this is also one of those things. I just have to be humble and God will show me. It's not something I can figure out, no? Like, yes. I just have to wait, like, not even wait, be empty. Or try to be empty. Yes. The problem is the filter huh, that we have um, created. No? So if you were like three years old and I told you, beta, get me a pen from there. Okay? Then by the time you're five years old, you're just like, why you want a pen? There's a pen lying next to you. <laughs> so this is the process of losing our innocence. So in Satsang, when we listen, we have to listen 
from like that innocence, just the childlike innocence. Because this will not make sense to the intellect and if it's making too much sense, then I'm doing something wrong. Because the idea really is to transcend all of that. So it is, I should do that, just be empty and it will somehow... Just follow, like, they, like an innocent child. Don't make a position just... Huh? At three years have we decided I'm going to listen to my father. No, you don't bear any of those positions. Can you tell me something to follow like that? I just try. Follow. follow. <laughs> <laughs> Usually when do grown-ups become children? When they become fully helpless. And they become fully helpless. They run out of moves, no? Guruji says in here, run out of moves. Huh? Till then it seemed like a chess match between the master and the mind. Master says, become empty, mind says, what? I'm still there, how can I? You see, then it'll come next, then next. They play like that. And there comes a point where we just out of moves. Jump. Yeah. Okay. Um, what did you just say? Um, particularly the last the last days, I felt what what is really strongly in the way here is this is this um, deeply ingrained sense of responsibility for everything. I have to take over responsibility for my family, for my house, for this, for that, for everything. And even when I, when I pray, I found myself praying for being able to take over the responsibility. Yes. <laughs> as, <laughs> as, a little bit sometimes, you know, but it's, it's this tendency. And then from this, I saw how deeply ingrained this is. And I'd really like to look a bit on, on, on this. I know it's nothing but a thought. It's a thought construct, but it's so strong sometimes. Yeah. Yes, and it's a huge fallacy. Mm. Huge fallacy in the sense that we don't know if we'll have one more breath or one more heartbeat. Mm. We don't know how to move finger. We don't know any of these things. And if there was a choice between leaving responsibility to this me or with God, who would we leave it with? So if your life becomes permeated just with God, who better to take responsibility? The one who is responsible for all of this. You see, and don't allow your mind to categorize that and say, oh, okay, that is as far as spirituality goes, but as far as the worldly condition goes, then I have to take it back. Hmm. And handing over to him, all can unfold from there. <clears throat> Hand over your body, everything to him. Allow him for whatever <coughs> movement has to happen, let it happen. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes there's also a, a thought, um, the only responsibility I have is to hand it over to God, but it's also a construct. It's, yeah. it's not but as long as it's helpful in that way that it leads yeah. you to mm. the surrender. It's okay. Yeah. Mm. But don't think about it more. <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> Don't worry, we are here together. It's not yes. like you won't speak more. You can speak as much as you want. Yes. So don't, when you come to satsang, don't pressurize yourself that yeah. I must ask all the right questions in time.
Say again. With people pray yeah. anywhere in the world, and in anywhere to any god or anywhere. Um, there, I was just thinking, like you know, the one thing that's common is the head is bowed down, yeah. and then um, that words I don't know in our minds and hearts may be all different, but the head is bowed down. How do you bring God to your relationship? Yes, well, first bringing it to yourself. Then you can't avoid Him <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> if you're fully permeated with God, then relationship, work, everything. So you don't make efforts in your relationship? Don't make efforts. Um, you, you have to make like, efforts in a relationship to be with God. Yeah. Uh, it can seem like more effort. <laughs> when you're in a relationship, there are so many buttons being pressed, so many triggers, so many things happening. Then the effort to stay with God and to stay in His love seems to be higher at times. I've seen you be so, so humble and, and, and patient and and yeah, this is the, the example that I look at. It all has to come from his presence, from his will. The mind wants to carve out a separate, like, circle <laughs> where, it, where it's about me and them. Really? It can be like that. It just doesn't work. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <coughs> Kierkegaard said something very beautiful. He said, it is only love when it is about God. Yeah. I think Mother Teresa said something similar. I wonder if she meant the same thing. Yeah. She said, in the end, it was only about you and God. And this movie is going to end soon. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my teachers told me, we live as if we are never going to die, and we die as if we never lived. Can you change that?
He said, we live as... As if we are never going to die. And we die as if we never lived. Um, yes, Father, so is there a sim simultaneous letting go, letting go, and also holding on to God, but letting yes, the, go? Letting go is the holding on. The happen. letting go of the false is the holding on to truth. So, Actually, the holding on is effortless, but for a while it will seem like it is effort. Okay? Because to let go of the false feels like effort. Because our mind is convinced it is so true. You see, the world is so true, the people in it are so true, the relationships are so true, what they tell, told me is so true. <laughs> One lady, she went to uh, Guruji and said, I can completely agree that I am not real, but I just cannot believe that my husband is not real. <laughs> Because it is designed to, this Maya is designed to seem real. And if there is something in this Maya that even more so than everything else, it is relationships. What a strange thing you know, that in the human condition when we don't have these special relationships we feel that there's nothing I want more. Is it? And when we have these special relationships there's nothing we want to run from more. <laughs> so that itself shows you that it's mental, no? it's a mental projection. And in all of that, God is forgotten or becomes a side character in the movie. Yeah. Not what you think. <laughs> Just follow it. <laughs> Still thinking over it. <laughs> yes. One child got very angry with me. I don't remember who it was. I said that uh, all you have to do is jump without leaving your place. Mm -hmm. uh, in Just jump. Uh, then he or she, I don't remember, got really upset with me. Like, what are you saying? What is the jump? Somebody. What brings you to satsang? Initially, your mind may have a misguided understanding that it is learning something. So let's go. See, but after a point, it will not want to come to satsang at all. You will find every excuse, every reason to not come. You see? But still you come. 
what what are you following then something deeper isn't it something deeper that guides you okay. so this external one is just a representative an instrument of that Not there. <laughs> Either fresh, fresh game. Hmm? Not there. <laughs> Not there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you played the fresh fresh game? Fresh fresh. Uh, yes. <coughs> ah, when you were here? Mm -hmm. ah. <coughs> he suddenly said, okay. <laughs> I mean, And then what happened? The reverse guru effect. <laughs> Not every time, <laughs> Like I'm empty till you look at me. <laughs> Something wrong with the... Not always, <laughs> That's a great one. Because I was just fully fresh till you looked at me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> point of it. Normally you go to the school to look at the room like that, the eyes, get reversed. No, no, we, we can't lose that game. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> <laughs> Now are you doing this? Are you doing? But you all become very good actors. <laughs> all empty on the outside, <laughs> solving world peace on the inside. <laughs> okay, come on then. One, two, three, empty, 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 empty. But your eyes have to be open, otherwise I can't check. Not like that. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> okay. Just empty. Let go of everything. <laughs> hmm? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the best thing is 
In that line, everybody says yes, yes, yes. <laughs> In that whole line, everybody says, yeah, 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 yeah. You got me, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> I am the one. <laughs> okay, come on, fresh again, empty, 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 empty. No sleeping, no meditating, uh, no Turiya states, nothing. As you can expect, no? Okay, now my turn is... <laughs> okay. Let's go. Empty, fully in the moment, pure perception. Allow all thoughts to come and go. Nothing is important. Let it go. And who just keep looking at me? The one who believes the next thought will buy everyone dinner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> what, what can we order? <laughs> Let it come and go. Would you to own up?
Und drehst du dich. So now, whoever believes the thought, if you just allow it to come and go, the point is not to produce funny thoughts and interesting ones. Just let every thought come and go. But if you took it to be true, then expose it. Just say it out of your mouth and then forget about it. Honestly. Mm -hmm. That makes it easy for us, just for the thought. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, online? Uh, <laughs> okay, come, come, come. Start, start. Very good. See? Yeah. It's a quiet room full of sages. <laughs> Not one thought has been believed in so many. Hmm? I'm the only one who's believing all this. <laughs> That's the thought you're exposing? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> From where I know how to just follow. Huh? From where I know how to just follow. <laughs> <laughs> So empty, huh? We can stop satsang also. Huh? This thought of I need to stay empty. This thought I need to stay empty. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. Chaitanya as well. Where is the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> This is contagious. <laughs> it's an actual question. <laughs> 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 it's a hard, hard question. <laughs> like the Sadhguru presence, like, you must ask this question. <laughs> That's not counted. You can have it. That's not counted as thought. Okay, come, come, come.
Är det tar? I'm just scratching my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Not fully relaxed until exercise stops. Yeah, when someone starts talking. Ah. That's the oh, it's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, is. Meaningless, unimportant, just let it go. It adds no value to anything. Is still exposing or no? <laughs> Yeah. This is how we are all the time, I'm really jealous. <laughs> well, this room, I should be sitting down and all of you should sit up. First thought you believe? No, no, no. Thoughts are believe, but... For a short time, but expose it. When you believe it, just expose it. Means out dry water or something. Something. Just let it go. Damu is where? Not even sure which thoughts are believed. That's a thought? <laughs> yes. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Abhi to so much has rat hai. So much laughter was happening. Abhi that people got to catch you up. Ah, yes. <laughs> Relatable joke, that's why. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> your, your, your perception is easier at home. Pure perception is easier at home. Yeah. She's blasting all the notions of satsang. To look into the master's eyes, make us empty, to come to Sangha Hall is, you know, provides the support. <laughs> huh? Manu has given up? Have you given up? <laughs> like, kuch to kar rahe hai, <laughs> Empty, empty, empty. Let it all come and go. Huh? Not believing any thought in the last 10 minutes. Huh? 
You don't know what that. Just <laughs> 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 keep exposing like that. <laughs> so now he's just looking there now. <laughs> <laughs> Ekagrata. A couple of thoughts. I didn't even realize that I deleted and I was already out. I was thinking about the work and I was doing one. It took me two or three seconds to realize that I'm not here and I'm somewhere else. As I was saying, when the heart speaks, then pure perception is uninterrupted. But when the mind speaks, then you feel like you're somewhere else, you've lost track of where you are. It's a very good. That's it. That yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But at least now you are noticing that yes. no? more closely. It's good. So don't leave pure perception. I have to keep it. I have to keep it. You think? Yeah, I have to keep it. The one that wants to leave it, wants to keep it. <laughs> Comes as a gift. Comes only as a gift. Mujhse kyu kara hai? In continuation of Atmika's. <laughs> Thinker pose, but no thought is coming. You have a two-part thought? Two-punch two thought. Yeah. <laughs> so it's actually like thinking about them, yeah. doing the exercise yeah. with them, but then the mind is amount of saying that. <laughs> You're following that. <laughs> I don't think more about it. Come. <laughs> Because it can become a three-part. Yeah. I'm thinking of them. Oh, you're arrogant for saying that. I shouldn't have said that to him. Should I have said that? <laughs> Keep playing like that. <laughs> ah, Majid is there. Just let them come and go. No thought is any value. Unimportant, meaningless. Come and go. It's just that the opposing thoughts of doing the exercise is so painful. Yeah. yeah. Let it go, let it go. Saying the thoughts out loud really sees the thoughts. No. <laughs> 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 yeah, but only the ones you're believing. Huh? Yeah. 
Good. Just a thought, isn't it? True or thought? Easy? Without thinking. Easy? That's the good thought, yes. I shouldn't have sat in front today. <laughs> 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 true or thought? <laughs> Just a thought or true? <laughs> I see that. <laughs> How is so much love possible? How is so much love possible? Who tells you when you believe the God? Who tells you when you believe the God? Thought or true? <laughs> That's why I have that photo. <laughs> <laughs> True or thought? <laughs> The best is Andre. She's also me. Her eyes also saying one minute break. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, break, break. <laughs> like break, break, break. <laughs> Good. But if this is true, that you really exposed every thought that you believed in, or even if you exposed one tenth of the thoughts you believed in, then what's happening in this room? Easy or difficult? Huh? 
Block or go? No, no, just go. Ah, then the the <laughs> like that? <laughs> this is free. No thoughts, no me. No thoughts, no me, yes. I can't We're exposing this now. Okay, but we're on a break. That much. Who needs psychedelics? 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 Who needs this is the first time I truly got a sense of what you're saying in satsang. I don't know if she remembers. I had this report. I don't remember. you're like this all the time and must be much more. Much more? You can't do much more. And not all the time. Yes. <laughs> is it still alive the question? Or? Now what is it? Um, you know, the sense how you speak that the Maha mantra of the ego is what's in it for me. Yes, 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 exactly. I was saying on the how he says that the Maha mantra of the ego is what's in it for me, and that this sense of me actually can has this independent will to achieve this what's in it for me, no? And even in this temple of God, no? Again, it's like, exactly. what can I do even for my enlightenment yes. or exactly. my spiritual progress? Exactly. And how this seeking is, can also be done through the mind, you know? Yes. And it's, it's always me, me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Very happy you spot that. That's very important. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Because the mind takes charge of our spiritual search. Now what can I have to work on? See, and the outcome of that one and its spiritual search is the spiritual ego. It is not freedom. So it's important to let that one go. But you can use that for a pointer if we are applying now. If, if there's a pointer that comes and it actually makes you empty, then yes. So trying right now, so this we are trying now, not for. Yeah, it was just one, like not like one point, uh, something like that is okay. All thoughts are just thoughts. I have a, a question. So where is thought relative to an unwanted sensation? I'm sure you're going to say all of it's thought, but it really feels like there's a disturbance and something doesn't want it, but I can't really spot the thought. So the labeling of wanted or unwanted comes from thought. Mm. 
the space of consciousness is very open. It doesn't care, this, like the room doesn't care what furniture you put inside. And actually it is its own, in its own light that every, every sensation shows up. So are you kind of saying like fear yeah. and desire is what a is, thought? Notice if you ever had the same emotion, the same feeling, the same sensation twice. What happens is we end up labeling with these broad strokes. Like this is fear, this is happiness, this is anxiety, this is joy. But actually you never experience the same emotion twice. Every moment, just like we've not ever experienced this exact scene in the movie and we won't experience it ever again. Every emotion, every sensation is also unique. Okay? So in the mind's primitive sort of attempt to to make it part of the narrative, says I was feeling fear, I was feeling exci excitement. Guruji uses this beautiful example. Isn't it? He said that uh, <coughs> if you have stage fright and you're asked to speak on stage, you experience something. You see, you say, "Oh, I'm so anxious, I'm frightened. This is fear." But if you were going on a holiday and you were excited about it, and you experience something similar, you say, "I'm so excited, I'm so happy." You see, so you label it happiness, but in the energetic construct of it, it may not be that different. You see? So don't allow your mind to label the sensation. Allow the sensation to just be watched in pure perception. You see, so in pure perception, what happens? It's not just pure perception of this, isn't it? It's pure perception of all the inner layers as well. Everything is perceived, but nothing is resisted. It's a full allowing. But the minute you label it as unwanted, or even if you call it fear, you are automatically limiting, resisting it in a way. So, in the movement of resistance, no, there is no such. The it even the, even the, when it's being perceived, it's almost like the call. It, there's there's yeah. moments where yeah. it's so, back and then it. Can any sensation itself resist anything at all? Like that. What is it resisting? What if, is it resisting? It feels like resistance is its own movement. So suppose it's like a constriction, it's like this something. Mm -hmm. What is it resisting? So how to make resistance out of a sensation? By taking a position, the subtlest position. mental position, even the subtlest seeming, the mind may tell you, I'm not doing that. But if you really notice, then you see that neither constriction nor expansion really makes a difference to you as consciousness. But the minute we label it, then we are determining uh, either a desire or a aversion towards that. And only when that label comes, does it become a resistance. Yeah. So ego and resistance actually are the same thing. When you're full allowing, no ego. And don't diagnose anything in your realm of sensation. Just don't know what it is. Yeah. Because Sometimes I'm fully with you, but sometimes like I know I know just to explain things you need to use words. The stories you say seem so, oh, I don't want X and X to happen, but sometimes it, it doesn't even feel like there's a, a visible story, but there is things wanting and not wanting happening yeah. without a real story to follow. It's just like this prison of yeah. and I'm sometimes out of it, sometimes in it. And so this, this this one is the spiritual checker guy, uh, which is my arch nemesis. Which guy is? <laughs> this one who can say, this is what happens, this is what it is, this is what... Leave all of that. Now, uh, uh, don't determine. Don't determine the nature of anything at all. Uh,
Yeah, so just let go. Everything. But the mind wants something to hold. It is struggling. It wants some basis. Yeah. Always it's in want. Exactly. That time it's uh, ultimately it starts. Only the baseless wants basis constantly. <laughs> So the human condition has become like this, that we want to make a stable structure out of this house of cards. You see? We want to make our conclusions, 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 but somewhere we recognize it's all unstable. There is no truth in any of that. See? So allow it to be blown away. You can feel like, but I invested so much in these structures, in this understanding. Now he's saying, let them all go. See, I want to pick and choose. None of that. Don't leave your perception. Maybe that's a simple enough to. Because to go to the mind, you need to leave pure perception. But the pure perception is also 95% focused on <coughs> visual perception. Part. It's okay. At least experience this world, <laughs> which you are missing in the story of me. No? And there you don't have to worry so much about, because I know that in, when you are empty and in pure perception, then yourself is apparent to you, your being is apparent to you, it is naturally just apparent. No? Can't help it. Like if you, if that's why I kept asking, no, in pure perception, is it just these perceptions that you're witnessing? Even that which witnesses is apparent, but not as an object, of course. What happened to the one minute break? Happened because very happy. Back to normalcy. The whole line. It's not apparent. It's like there's just a world. There's nobody witnessing it. Are you witnessing it or no? Yes. Yes, how you know? <laughs> it's because it's apparent. That is the apparency, the non-objective apparency that I'm talking about. You see, it's not objectively apparent. You don't see like the world and the awareness hovering over there looking at the world. It's not like that. You see, but you are aware that it is I that is witnessing this world. That is the apparency. It's non-objective. The recognition of the self is non-objective. And yet you recognize this. We always known this actually, that it is I that witnesses all these perceptions. It's like that. It's very simple. It's very organic. Oh, one more question. So some time back, maybe a few months back, you mentioned about the forehead, uh, forehead part wrinkling and going with the thought. Do right? you remember that? No, I was just saying that if you notice that if you're thinking, thinking your forehead just hardens up, right? like this. Mm -hmm. So one tip is just to keep your forehead relaxed. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, this is true, like that, I forgot this. You see, the mind gives us oranges and we are just squeezing them, <laughs> making orange juice. 
see, we should we must not, we must let them come and go. Our face shows it. That's how we are able to do this exercise. Whenever you go for this exercise, and that's what I kind of do. So it kind of. Uh, uh, you just block the oranges. Yeah. Relax and keep trying. Don't make juice. That's all. <laughs> Don't make juice or orange juice. <laughs> they have it all wrong. Yeah, stay like that, just stay empty. <laughs> Huh? This exercise is Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. It's very similar to um, the exercise he's offering. No? Yeah. A little more prolonged because we're directly wiping out all the time. <laughs> 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 I'm laughing to not seem so scary. <laughs> Stop it! Stop. <laughs> You're just thinking, stop it. <laughs> In the garb of uh, remembering what you said. <laughs> yeah, what is that? However, <laughs> because I used to really pick on the word but, don't say but anything at all. However, how <laughs> 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 if you are acting? It's like <laughs> 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 when I'm looking at and I'm looking away, I say fast, say fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's doing like that. <laughs> I noticed one time I was just going like this, like this, like this, like this. Then I could visibly see from the corner of my eye the, the change in the... <laughs> <laughs> Karmin just came, he's like, what's happening? <laughs> were you listening online? No, no you were <laughs> Hmm? It's not stop. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to snatch a picture of me laughing. Ah, just trying to not look like I was getting Yes, you just Chandra is the best actor. She's very good. <laughs> Nothing has ever happened. <laughs> 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 
मैं आई वाज एक्सपेक्टिंग इट Huh? You lost it. Jaws and head, head both. Huh? Jaws and head, head is also a thing. Head has got a break, no? Huh? It's broken. It's <laughs> a break. <laughs> I just said basically. basically. <laughs> in all the, in all the world. <laughs> Two years is, is good. It's good. Two years is good. <laughs> Just a thought. You know, I don't mean that question when I say thought or truth. It's just to get you to see that it's just a thought and leave it. Yeah. Because the mind is not producing truth. Yeah? Jet lag? Empty. <laughs> now she's going to police you all the time. <laughs> Check a gal. <laughs> check a gal. <laughs> check a gal now. <laughs> After so many years. <laughs> so she got on the same plane. <laughs> Yeah, are we still playing? <laughs> Your perception was odd interrupted. <laughs> you tell him what you told Saurabh. <laughs> you do your own thing. <laughs> <laughs> you do your own fresh fresh empty empty <laughs> <laughs> Awakenings are happening. I know it's like 
मैं कहा गया ये क्या हो रहा है यू गॉट द गेम वट इज द गेम इट इज फ्रेश नया बनाओ क्रिएट अ फ्रेश थॉट सो वट इज द वन यू क्रिएटेड I also say that, no? Actually, they don't let your mind beat you up with the same old stuff. Ask it to give you something fresh and new. Yeah, yeah, man. It's my teacher. ये थॉट पुलिस वहां बैठी है He stopped playing long there. <laughs> you were just pointing out things. <laughs> thought police you were thinking that <laughs> so when I, when i see the game is over <laughs> does it mean we start believing all that <laughs> He <laughs> just I'm just saying don't have to expose it, <laughs> but live like that, live empty. You know? Can we live like this? This is to create the space for God. This is to be empty for God. so this inquiry prayer all of it is leading to this got scared of me looking at them now this the lady the complaint used to be oh i'm upset because you never look at me <laughs> now it will be because you always looking at me <laughs> Anuj's fresh thought is what? Fresh day, two minutes before it is already. Abhi tak? On repeat, on loop. Huh? I'm trying to get out of it, but it's there. Yeah. I mean, again and again. Yeah. 
just allow it to come and go. If you try to block it, it seems persistent. Okay. Yeah, I reached the box. Huh? Try to get out of it, but then again. <laughs> Reaching police officers with thoughts, <laughs> dealing with them. <laughs> you have to be, no matter what situation is, you know, you have to be empty. Of course, sometimes the situation seems so strong that we feel like we have to go to the mind now, but it's not true. <clears throat> That's when the rubber hits the road. The spirituality or God's presence or to be empty was only useful in the satsang hall. Then that would not be true spirituality. <laughs> this exercise we did right now, um, this passing thing. Normally, you're, now you are saying like you should continue to be in the space. My question is, should this happen organically or you have to put an effort? What is the effort that was needed to make it happen now? Uh, when the thoughts were coming, not believing yes. it, that was the effort. So that seeming effort we have to make. Okay. I said seeming effort is actually to pick up his effort. Okay. Huh? But because our habit, that's why the whole porter example at the airport picking up bags from the conveyor belt all his life. When you tell him to stop, he's like, that is effort, no? No, no, sir, I'll help you. All right. You don't pay me, I'll still help you. Mm -hmm. So it's like the mind has been fired, it's still come. So if it feels like effort to not pick up the bags, then make the effort. Then we realize actually that is the effortlessness. Okay. Yeah. Now, in the same analogy, I was saying that sometimes I already believed a thought and I was already out with that thought, you know. Like in this case, like I picked up a wrong bag and I'm just walking, yes. you know. Like, um, again. Yeah, well, don't pick up more bags about picking up the wrong bag. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's what happened. Like, why did I pick up the wrong bag? There's the next bag. How should I stop? That's the next one. Yes. <laughs> That's why I say we picked up salad, now we are going to for the seven course meal. Just return to the diet. Thanks. So, um, this exercise, uh, I don't have to give a preface. Um, it seems like between pure perception and then believing in a thought and then back to pure perception, there's like this invisible haze of sleep and it's such a mystery. Like what is this going back and forth? It's not really me that's doing it or my efforts. Don't understand. It's <laughs> yeah. As I say, don't make sense or try to understand the nature of anything. Don't determine anything. Yeah. Um, also, what became apparent is uh, it's all or none. There's no in-between, which is what you've been saying in different words, that there's either room for one. <coughs> so it's not like, oh, it's okay if I think a few thoughts and I'll come back to this.
any value in doing self-inquiry at that uh, yeah. staying open and but is any point in still you know saying okay, checking okay you know who am i who's, who's, so who's very good. thank you so what when we are empty what if anything should be done uh, let's broaden the question a bit he asked whether it's all right to do the self-inquiry or is it more helpful to do the inquiry when you're empty when you're empty like that allow your heart to guide you if the heart says who am i or if the heart calls the name of god so that is to follow the will of god when we are empty then we can follow his will and then we can't predetermine and say we must do that all the do that do this is to bring us to this point so do the inquiry chant pray everything have faith be humble all of it is to bring us to this point once we are at this point then the true master will tell us the one who is in the heart and uh, the first time we did this i was pointing out every second ha ta 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 so all the sadhana all the prayer all the love for god all the inquiry all the deepening has made the texture of this room different today after time has passed you see so So all this is helpful for us to remain in tune God's light and God's presence. Your mind will come and tell you, but we can just always do this. <laughs> Can't we just always do this? Because it doesn't work that way. Because you make the cake, then you eat it. <laughs> like an exercise you were saying <coughs> you build the cake and then you eat it so in the same way you make the cake with all the heartfelt devotion heartfelt sadhana and then it seems so natural but if you are new to satsang or this was your first satsang then you may just be sitting there wondering what are they doing what are they laughing about why is he saying that this is the highest i've ever been without any external substance needed is he what is he saying we are not doing anything we are just sitting and he is doing clap clap like that <laughs> what's going on is he so so to even come to this point it it is grace that brings us and it is in a way the fruit of our love for god you know a fruit of our dedication towards him a faith for him 